How y'all doing? Thank you guys so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here today and talk to you guys all about becoming a cranial prosthesis specialist. But before I get started, I heard some of y'all say that y'all have heard about a cranial prosthesis specialist before. By a show of hands, how many of us know what a cranial prosthesis specialist is? If you don't, it's okay. Okay, so do any of you guys want to volunteer and tell what a cranial prosthesis specialist is? Um, so from my, uh, I guess, knowledge, um, so I took a class in Miami uh, at Barnum Brothers. So um, the lady basically was, was did the same thing. So basically when you have like conditions like um, alopecia, certain different types of alopecia, um, a cranial, what's it called? Prosthesis. A cranial prosthesis specialist um, is able to get you certified. Oh, when it's certified to get you a unit when you deal with certain conditions with your hair. But it has to be like medical, I think. Absolutely. You want to add on to it? Yeah. So the way the wigs are made, they're differently. They're made differently than your standard lace wigs or the wigs to help protect the skin on top of their head. And it's it's deeper than that. It's deeper. She does explain that to me. Okay. Can we give them a round of applause? Because that is actually what a cranial prosthesis specialist is. So some gift maybe even some well, gift card, good. maybe even some gift card. Private label, let's go. So again, my name is India Mason and I am the founder and CEO of Wig Medical. And we have a certification course that certifies people to become cranial prosthesis specialists. So we're gonna talk about what medical related hair loss is, what a cranial prosthesis specialist is, the different types of cranial prosthetics, how to get certified, and then have some time at the end for question and answers if you guys wanna ask me some questions. All right, a cranial prosthesis specialist is someone who is certified in providing medical grade wigs to clients who suffer from medical related hair loss. So an important thing to note about a cranial prosthesis specialist is that we don't build clients directly, we build insurance companies. So how many of you guys have a hair company? How many of you sell extensions, lashes, wigs? Okay, so, in contrast to a cosmetic company, a cranial prosthesis specialist builds the big boys. So Blue Cross Blue Shield, Aetna, Humana, all of these insurance companies, right? And the purpose of this is to provide the client a sense of normalcy. So just like you said, what's your name? Don. Don. So just like Don said, these clients suffer from medical related hair loss. And there are many different types of medical related hair loss. We have alopecia, we have PTSD, we have postpartum, we have chemotherapy and radiation. All of these are different types of medical related hair loss that clients shouldn't have to pay for. Because for example, if you break your leg, you go to the doctor, your leg is no more functional, you'll get a prosthetic leg, right? In this same sense, these units should be covered by health insurance as well. So as a cranial prosthesis specialist, your job is to pro have, provide these units to clients and build the insurance companies. And we'll talk more about it as we go through the presentation. But by definition, this is what a cranial prosthesis specialist is. So what is medical related hair loss? So aside from alopecia, I just gave you guys a few different examples of medical related hair loss. You have clients sometimes that suffer as burn victims. So a lot of veterans at war, when they're in war, in combat, they may lose their hair. You know, some veterans have to pull their hair back into a ponytail. You guys are learning about alopecia, different types of alopecia, right? Does anybody know what traction alopecia is? Traction alopecia? <laughs> traction alopecia is like off the head off the head and you just put it on and you can pull your hair. Right, right. Another gift card, cha-ching, cha-ching. Okay, traction alopecia is a type of medical related hair loss. How many of us wear frontals, right? How many of us have noticed that sometimes we take our frontals off and our edges have left us too, right? Right? That is considered medical related hair loss because of the traction and the abrasion from the glue on the lace has made your edges come out. So all of these are like just different types of medical related hair loss and hair loss Alopecia is the most common type of hair loss, but it's not the only type of hair loss. How many of us know children who may suffer from medical related hair loss? How many of us have seen the commercials, the St. Jude commercials where kids are going through chemotherapy and radiation? A, a cranial prosthesis specialist also provides units to children as well, children and men as well. So you said you had a hair extensions company, right? Most of your clients are what? Women, right? As a cranial prosthesis specialist, 
your clients are anybody that suffers from medical related hair loss. So if we're talking about the income side of it, becoming a cranial prosthesis specialist is very profitable because you have a large customer base. Not only do you have a large customer base, you're billing insurance companies. And we're going to get to the cost of the units in a minute, but the medical grade equipment used to make these units is far more expensive than just cosmetic units. So as a specialist, you're making all of that profit. So here we're talking a little bit about alopecia. So we have alopecia areata, which is just, you know, hair loss in acute regions of the hair. This can be hereditary. This can be from stress. This can be genetics. This is not something that you can control. Um, alopecia totalis is alopecia, it's hair loss everywhere. So you may see clients that don't have any eyebrows, clients that have lost the hair off their arms. They don't have hair anywhere. Alopecia uni universalis is similar to that. And then we see male alopecia. The leading cause for hair loss in men is alopecia. And we have, I'll show you guys a little bit later, but Mikey brought some toppers. That's what I was going to ask. Mm-hmm. So those are units that, that you might recommend for a client or a male client that's suffering from alopecia. Sure. Right on time. Thanks. Right, right. Um, and then traction alopecia. Traction alopecia is one that we may be able to control a little bit, just avoiding as much manipulation to the scalp. But sometimes you see in acute regions of the hair, once you experience traction alopecia, it's really not hard to restore that hair growth. So braids, hats. Uh, buns, frontals, units, over manipulation of the hair is kind of where we see a lot of traction alopecia. But doesn't that usually happen to the hair that's not like your like actual hair? That's kind of just like the, what's it called? The, the, the lighter hair, like your edges, thinner. Yeah, the thinner. The thinner regions of the hair? That's a really good question. So his question was, doesn't traction alopecia usually happen in thinner regions? And to answer your question, it can happen in anywhere in your scalp. So for example, if you are experiencing a traumatic event, so let's say you go to the movies and it gets wild and they're fighting and they pull the hair, that's considered traction alopecia because they've ripped it from the nape and those follicles are no more reproducing, okay? So then we talk a little bit about cancer-related and chemotherapy-related hair loss. So this can be breast cancer, any type of cancer that causes you to lose your hair. This is because the medication and the radiation really kind of stops the hair follicles from multiplying as they frequently would. It affects the manipulation. This is considered medical related hair loss. And so you can see this with children. You can see this with men. You can see this with women as well. Burn victims. So as a cranial prosthesis specialist, one of the most rewarding things that I think you kind of get to do is work side by side with clients to provide a sense of normalcy. And so burn victims are victims of trauma. So sometimes you see, again, like veterans come and they'll, they'll talk to you about their stories at war and how they were in combat and lost all of their hair. This is another type of medical related hair loss. And as a cranial prosthesis specialist, you can actually get government contracts to be able to provide units to the veteran affairs hospitals. So this is a really profitable um, field to get into because this is consistent revenue with the veteran affairs. Trichotillomania is another type of hair loss, and we consider this kind of like a psycho hair loss, um, medical related hair loss, because these clients are pulling their eyebrows, pulling at their scalp, pulling hair from their bodies uncontrollably. So this could be a result of anxiety, this could be a result of stress, but this is also considered a type of medical related hair loss. And then we have scalp infections. So ringworms, scalp psoriasis, seborrheic dermatitis, all of these types of scalp infections can also contribute to medical related hair loss. So I'm going to take a break right now and I'm going to ask for maybe two volunteers to give me a type of hair loss that I just spoke about for a gift card. Two volunteers. Um, I'm going to let Dallas pick. I'm going to let Dallas pick. Give me a type of medical related hair loss we just talked about. Stand up so I can hear you. Two types of medical related hair loss. Burn victims, veterans, and cancer patients. Okay. One more volunteer. Okay. Alopecia totalis, which is what? Um, it could be from things like getting chemotherapy where the follicles is no, no longer functioning because of cancer. Okay, good job. Y'all give them a round of applause.
So now that we've kind of talked about, briefly talked about some types of medical related hair loss, let's talk about the actual prosthetic, right? So when we hear the word prosthetic, what do we think about? Without, not even just hair, just in general, what do you think about when you hear the word prosthetic? Prosthetic legs, prosthetic arms, anybody else? Okay, she pretty much got it for us, legs, arms, okay. Why would you think, just thinking critically, why do you think a client that suffers from medical related hair loss might not be able to wear just a 30 inch bust down full lace? Why y'all think? Okay, what's your name? Skyler. What you say? The cap doesn't protect the scalp. Okay, it doesn't protect the scalp. What else? What do y'all think? It might irritate the scalp. Yeah, their condition's already sensitive. Right, their scalp is already sensitive, right? And one more. Absolutely. So all of you guys are correct. Clients that suffer from medical related hair loss need medical grade equipment. So on top of what you guys said, these clients are not wearing these units for fashion. A lot of them are wearing them because they want it to resemble their natural hair texture and they want a sense of normalcy. So how many of you guys again wear, wear wigs? How many of us know that once we leave the gym, our wig is not as fresh as we need it to be because the glue has kind of gotten, it's, it's, it's nasty, right? These clients, they want a unit that they can wear in most cases 24 hours out of the day because they don't want to be reminded that they've suffered from hair loss. So with that, a lot of all medical grade units, for the most part, have to be custom and they have to have medical grade equipment. So we have a few units up here that I'll dive into and kind of give you guys more information about. But the overall composition and how these units are made is completely different than that of a cosmetic wig because it serves a different purpose, right? So if I, all my life, had 4C hair and I lose my hair to chemotherapy, I might not want jet black hair. I want hair that resembles my hair, right? Because I want it to, I want to be how I was prior to my, my condition. Some of the materials that are made up of cranial prosthetics, we have skin with lace front. So skin material is a material that you'll see here. It kind of resembles skin, it's very soft. Um, again, he made a good point for burn victims. A lot of times burn victims already have medications or antibiotics that they have to apply to their scalps daily. So I don't want lace to irritate that, right? So I need something that might resemble my skin. We have a full skin base. This may be for clients, again, burn victims that want all the way around. I want something a little bit more comfortable. I don't want a scratchy, itchy lace material. That's not going to work for me. I need something that's like my scalp that I can work out in, I can breathe in. And then you'll see these units fit a lot snugger because of the material. So this one is going to fit on their head. It'll be easier for them to apply and they can wear it all day long. A full lace base, this might work for somebody that has alopecia totalis. They don't have hair at all. So it's not really uncomfortable to me. I could probably do a 30 inch buzz down if I wanted to, but if I don't have to, if I don't need to, right? Because I kind of want to look normal. Like, you know, I just want to, I want to have my own sense of normalcy. And then we have the mono PU. So the Palo Uthrain Edge, and this one is here. This one you might see a lot with traction alopecia because you, if you can see how the wig is constructed, it has lace only in acute places. So sometimes with traction alopecia, you don't lose your hair everywhere. Some parts of your hair, you do have hair and some parts you don't. So this kind of gives that flexibility for you to be able to have comfortability, flexibility, and you know, kind of normalcy. So I'm gonna take a break. How much do you guys think these wigs cost? Like we just, we're talking, this is Paul Mitchell. Y'all are here to, to, in cosmetology school, you wanna make money from beauty in the industry. So let's talk numbers for real. On average, what do you think? Like 1500 like in between 1500 and 2500 Okay, he said in between 1500 and 2500 $3,000. $3, $3, Anybody else? $5,000. $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, right, right, right. So an average cost of a cranial 12-inch body weight, $1,300, right? So most clients don't want a 12-inch unit. Most of them want they want some length so you as the specialist are profiting from that so imagine if so let's just say mikey you want to hop in that we're talking about the prices of the cranials yeah so they're gonna they're gonna start um generally between four to five hundred dollars uh that's at like a wholesale cost for these to buy, and mm -hmm. to buy. 
as a cranial prosthesis specialist, but then you're going to, it's going to sell for, you know, the medical company. 1400 14, I've seen 1800 mm -hmm, 32 so, Yeah, so you're going to make, you can make anywhere from 1000 thousand, two thousand $2,000 from a wig, and it's all covered by insurance, insurance company. So you're going to get paid. It's not like, is that credit card thing go through? Yeah, it's going to be taken care of, and it's going to help somebody. Yep. So while we're on numbers, let's just hypothetically think, right? All of our clients are coming to you with a prescription from their dermatologist. So when you go to the doctor and you have a prescription, most times you need a what? A refill, right? So your doctor may say, um, Don, these pills are for your vision. You go and refill them every three months. And every three months, you're going to go to CVS and you're going to refill your prescription. And you're not going to think about it because it's covered through your insurance, right? The same thing with cranial prosthetics. So you might have a client that comes to you every two months and gets another $1,200 unit, right? And if you have five clients that are doing that, right? You're generating revenue. So if you have five clients a week, that's 20 clients in a month. And those and they're on the schedule that they come to you every two months for their units. You can imagine the amount of revenue that you're going to make. So I'm going to use you as an example again, because you have a hair company and I started with a cosmetic company. The biggest, I think, irritation or frustration with a hair company is chargebacks, right? So annoying, they get the wig, $700 wig. They're like, I didn't get my wig, or I didn't like my wig. And then you get on Instagram, and you see her with the wig at her birthday, loving the wig, and you're like, why did I just, you know, as a cranial prosthesis specialist, you're billing insurance companies. So chargebacks don't exist. This is your money with your client, and you're doing good business because you're helping them obtain a sense of normalcy. And you'll see that there are no chargebacks are non-existent because they're walking with you step by step throughout the process. The unit is custom to them, right? Um, again, I know a lot of you guys are here to learn cosmetology, so there's also a branch of cranial prosthetics that is application. So you can get certified as a specialist and also add application, you're killing the game, okay? Okay, so we talked about um, the different types of units, and I showed you guys a little bit of them, but this is what one skin with lace fronts might look like. So this is more so for your clients who want to balance the natural look with durability. So they want, they kind of want a unit that's going to resemble again their natural hair texture, but they also want something that's going to last a long time. So this may be your older clients that don't want to go through all of that every two months. They just want a wig that they can put on, wear to church and go, right? Skin with lace front is what this unit is called. And I see some of you guys are taking notes. I can leave it up for a second if you want me to. Again, you, you can use either French lace or Swiss lace. Swiss lace would be the most undetectable. But again, the unit that you provide to your client will be dependent upon their preference. Also their insurance coverage, right? Because you have to make sure these units can be covered 100% through their insurance. And in some cases, you may have some clients that are like, I don't care, I just want that one. I'll pay whatever extra I need to pay. But as a specialist, it's important that you know the policies and also know which unit is best suitable for each client. So then we have a full skin-based cranial prosthetic unit. I'm gonna take a break. I gave an example of a client who would need a full skin-based unit, and I told you guys why that client might need a skin-based unit. Who remembers? Who remembers, who remembers? Who remembers? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Burn victims, why burn victims? The medicine. Oh, because they might have to put some on the Right. Did you hear him? He said burn victims. And the reason why burn victims might best be suitable for a full skin based cranial prosthetic is because they may need to apply medication to their scalps, right? And this is this material is the least reactive, right? So it's probably gonna be less less abrasive than a full lace and probably not as abrasive as a mono. So this unit would probably be best for a client that is suffering from a burn. It's completely glued onto the scalp. So ap that's a good question. That's an application question. His question was, does this unit glue onto the scalp? So because the material is so succinct, most times these units are gonna fit the client's head so custom that they might not even have to, but they could if they wanted to. But again, remember they're burn victims. So I might have to put antibiotics to heal my burn. So I might not want the adverse reaction of the glue, you know, but it's again, it's your client's preference. 
Full lace base cranial. I also gave an example of somebody that would use a full lace base cranial. Are you raising your hand? My question was for like, birth victims, if they don't want to keep reapplying their lace, but they want to keep coming back to you, or is it like fitted to where it's like a glueless kind of HD lace? Okay, so her question was for burn victims, if they didn't want to keep applying the lace, do they have to keep coming back to you, the cranial prosthesis specialist, or is the unit custom? So most times these units are 100% custom, right? You can still get them uncustom, but these measurements are gonna come from their dermatologist with the exact circumference of their head. And you as a specialist, unless you go and do further application training, you're not required to apply it. So that's a really good question. So back to this one, who did I say would use a full lace based cranial? In the back, what's your name? I can't hear you. So her answer were, was clients that have lost their hair due to chemotherapy and radiation, maybe a client that you might wanna recommend a full lace based cranial to. This is because most times they've lost their hair in all regions of their hair. So they may be more likely to want a full lace base because they don't have traction alopecia where they only have hair in some places and they're not a burn victim where their scalp is already sensitive and abrasive and, and the material might be abrasive, they have lost their hair everywhere and they really may want just a full lace. I can pull it up in a ponytail. I can do two ponytails. I can dye it. I can color it. I can do whatever I want. So really good job. Give them a round of applause. And then the lace mono with the polyuterane edge. These, again, would be a unit maybe for somebody that has suffered from traction alopecia because there are some different regions of the unit or their hair where they still have hair, right? So it's not completely, it's not alopecia totalis, it's not alopecia universalis, it's just they have hair in some regions. Do we have any questions about the units before I go on to the earnings of a cranial prosthesis specialist? No questions? Okay. Okay, her question was, what type of glue is used for medical gray wig application? There is a specific type of glue because this solution is different than what you might see in like ghost bond or bone hold. Because again, these units are not for cosmetic wear. They're for everyday wear. So the glue that's used for them is very durable. It's medical grade glue. It's a medical grade solution used to apply these units. Is that something that you can get? You Is it like something that you can get over the counter or is it, is, does it have to be prescribed or something? No, so as a as a stylist, again, like just like with regular hair companies, you'll find you find a medical grade vendor that offers the medical grade glue and you make sure that they're in compliance with the regulations that you need and you order your glue. OK, so let's talk a little bit about the earnings of a cranial prosthesis specialist. So this is we did it on a scale so that, you know, you guys could really see what the projected earnings might be. But again, it does vary. So if you had five clients as specialists for the year, right? So you have five clients and on average it's $1,200. So that's just if they're all getting a 12 inch, um, you make $6,000 a month from those five clients. If they get a 12 inch, if you only have five clients and then $72,000 a year. How many of us think that we would have way more than five clients in a year? Five clients is a small amount of clients. Yes. And this is only for the wig. This does not include like because if I'm not mistaken, to, to get this license for what you do, you have to be a licensed okay. cosmetologist. cosmetologist right? No, no you, don't. you don't have to be a licensed cosmetologist to be a cranial prosthesis specialist. So this is just if you're seeing five clients. Are you a, are you a cosmetologist? No, I'm not a cosmetologist at all. So I was saying like it would be different if you were also a cosmetologist and doing application. Absolutely, absolutely. So imagine. If you saw five and five clients a year, you will see five clients in a month. You might like, you know, it's if you he asked a really good question. If just to become a cranial prosthesis specialist, you do not have to be a licensed cosmetologist. But if you are a licensed cosmetologist and also apply the wigs, you can almost double or triple these numbers. And it's through the insurance company. So it's guaranteed. Right. So this is not like we're hoping and praying. This is like this is the reality of what's going on. Ten clients a month. Again, twelve hundred per client. Twelve thousand a month. One hundred and forty four thousand dollars a year. That's ten clients a year. That's just if you woke up and was like, OK, I'm going to do a client. I might do a client a month and then I'm going to take two months off like that. That's what that means. So 
how it works is that they're going to come to you from their dermatologist. So you still need to market. You still need to get out there. You still need to make sure people know that you are a practicing, practicing specialist. But you, it's, it's a lot different because you're in a concentrated field and there's not many cranial prosthesis specialists. So it's, it's a little bit different than a regular cosmetologist or, you know, I'm having a hundred dollar lash special. Like this is, this is different. But imagine how many clients you'll have if you build your clientele. Right. You'll have that plus what you have kind of built yourself. And a marketing technique that we give to the students that take the course is you go meet dermatologists because that's, who, that's who's going to bring you the clients. So if I meet five dermatologists a week in my area and they send me two clients a piece, that's 10 clients in a week. So instead of doing 10 clients a month, I'm now doing 10 clients a week and I'm tripling these, pro these projections. Do y'all understand? Like, if I am in network with insurance companies as a cranial prosthesis specialist, and on top of the 10 that I'm getting weekly from the dermatologist, I might even get two from Blue Cross Blue Shield. That's 12 clients a week. And then they have prescriptions, so they're coming back to see me. Projected revenue for a cranial prosthesis specialist is very, very high. I am, uh, do you guys have any questions about cranial prosthesis specialist, medical related hair loss, cranial prosthetics? She asked a great question. She said, is there a specific type of hair that you use for cranial prosthetics? It's based on your client's preference. So if I might have, uh, kinky straight natural hair and I want kinky straight natural hair. That's what I want in my unit. You see most kids want kinky curly. No, most kids want kinky curly hair. They can put it in a ponytail. Um, I saw another question back here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Her question was the clients come with a prescription in order to build the insurance companies. Your clients have to come to you with a prescription without a prescription. They can't get the medical grade wig through the insurance company. Any other questions? So how it works is that the client goes and sees a dermatologist. Hey, I'm experiencing hair loss right here. I don't know what happened. The dermatolo and, but I want, a, I want a medical grade unit. So the dermatologist then writes a prescription and then the client brings it to you as the specialist. And then you sit with the client and determine which unit might work best for them. And then you reach out to your vendor and you get the unit like that. And then you build the insurance company. No, as a cranial prosthesis specialist, I don't make any wigs. I just provide them to the clients and build the insurance company. I don't, I don't apply them. I just sit with the clients, have the consultation. We choose which unit works best for them. So the dermatologist does the exact circumference of the client's head. All you do is reach out to the vendor and get the unit. Right now, the only insurance company that does not cover uh, medical grade wigs is Medicare and Medicaid. However, there's a bill in Congress right now. I don't know if you guys are familiar with her name is Senator Ayanna Presley. They're passing a bill to get these wigs covered through Medicare and Medicaid. So imagine how much of an increase of clients there'll be once she does that, once that passes. Yes. Oh. Uh, so when it comes to that, when it comes to the billing, the money, how much you were making you put up there, does that include how much you paid or without that? Without that. That's just, and that's just projected. That's not even like, that's at the bare minimum how much you would make as a specialist. For application, you do need to be a licensed cosmetologist to apply, but cranial prosthesis specialists don't apply any units. We just provide the units to the clients. How do you find your vendors? Similar to how you would find it um, if you were sourcing for a cosmetic company, you just reach out. Mostly all of these units are constructed overseas. We don't have the materials in the States at all to really make these units. So it's just reaching out and finding, you know, a vendor that you know and trust because you still need to make sure it's of quality. You want to make sure it's, it's of durability um, because, again, like these are your clients. You want them to have a great experience with you. So when it's time for that two month refill, they're like, oh, let me, I have I have a specialist that I, that I want to call. Do you um, are you the only uh, are you the only person that does this with private label or no? What do you mean? Are you the only cranial prosthesis? Are you the only because I see that you work with private label, right? So it's like you're the insurance like bridge between the person and getting the hair. Getting so, the so I'm a cranial prosthesis specialist. Private label is sourcing medical grade wigs. And so it's, it's completely separate. Okay, so that's what I was asking. Are, are you the only person that work with them? No, so like if you're a cranial prosthesis specialist, you need a medical grade wig. They have them at private label. We actually have them here in Atlanta relative to having to order them. Medical grade wigs, the one thing is you'll get into it when sourcing them. These take a long time to make. Right. So normally you're like, you know, if people in China, they hit you up. They're like, oh, I got all these wigs for you and you can get it like in five days a week, something like that. These generally, even for me, we spend a lot. These these will take two to three months to get them. 
So the advantage of having us in Atlanta and why the other training properties specialists that we work with are excited is they can actually come to our showroom and like get it in real time instead of someone coming and being like, oh wait, I gotta wait a couple months and you don't have the upfront cost tens of thousands of dollars just to have some basic variations of these wheels. So basically right. they're your vendor, right? Well, he's still working to get the units all squared away, but it's helpful to be able to show clients the units based on their type of hair loss. So having them, if you guys are certified as a specialist, having them in Atlanta is a game changer because it takes a very long time, like Mikey said, to get them here in the States. So you could bring your clients and show them the different materials or buy units and have them at wherever you do your consultation. So that way it's not just pictures you're showing your clients. They can touch it, they can feel it, they can see it. And then that makes you that much better of a cranial prosthesis specialist. How long does it take to get certified? Okay. So I was enjoying being a cranial prosthesis specialist so much that I designed a certification course to certify other cranial prosthesis specialists in medical grade wigs. And I found that there wasn't a lot of information around medical grade wigs or how to even get certified. So I said I wanted to develop a course. And so I am a part of Wig Medical and we are a certification course platform that certifies students to become cranial prosthesis specialists. So our course is nine chapters and we talk about getting in network with insurance companies how to read um, medical diagnosis medical related hair loss client consultations how to set them up so how to sit down and talk to the clients which type of unit is best for which type of hair loss how do i reach out to insurance companies how do i get in network with insurance companies how to market as a cranial prosthesis specialist and all of this comprehensive course is self-paced and self-guided, meaning it's completely online and it's pre-recorded videos that I go through each lesson and walk you through step by step. But to answer your question, the course can take as long or as short as you'd like. We have students that have finished it in a week. We have students that have finished it in a day. We have students that are still working on it, but it's at your own pace and you can access the course as often or as little as you'd like. Um, we have a bonus section in the course called our Get In Network direct checklist we also have a directory and so our directory is very special because our students that are certified through crane through wig medical are um showing up number one in google search so for example if i was on google and i typed in cranial prosthesis cranial prosthesis specialist atlanta our students are showing up number one in google so if you guys can see that's about eight hundred thousand search results our student is number one and our student and that's also our student at number two so all of our students that are certified through our program are ranking number one in google right now so if i'm in atlanta and i'm suffering from hair loss and i google cranial prosthesis specialist atlanta my my i'm gonna come up as number one and this is our website big medical all right so let's skip ahead so our website to get certified is www.wigmedical.com. I am the instructor of the course, and we decided to do something very special for you guys today and give you 50% off of the course using the code Paul Mitchell. My name is India Mason. So if you have any questions, you can feel free to email. Okay, yeah. So our course online is 600, but you guys are getting it for 300. So Paul Mitchell, using the code Paul Mitchell is 50% off. But once you're certified, you can begin taking clients immediately. Again, I started as an entrepreneur with my hair company. I don't sell hair anymore. I'm just a full-blown cranial prosthesis specialist. Um, it's a really rewarding industry to get into, and it's guaranteed, especially with the economy. I don't know. You guys have noticed the economy is kind of doing a little cra something crazy. Um, this is guaranteed because you're billing insurance companies. So people are always going to have insurance. And also, the beauty the beauty industry industry never goes out of style. The world could be in it, and people still want to look pretty. Right. So, hair people will be paying for hair just as long as you do hair. Right. Provide it. Right. And you imagine the people that are uh, have lost hair due to frontals and medical grade. I mean, frontals and full lace wigs. If you tell them that they can have a unit covered through insurance, they would much more rather the unit be covered through their insurance than paying out of pocket for it. You're, you're an entrepreneur. So we have some students that set up offices, some students that work virtually. It depends on what works best for you and your business plan. Also, in addition to the course, on our website, we have a 42-page interactive workbook for free 
that you can download that'll kind of give you step by step and kind of guide you on the steps you need to take to become a cranial prosthesis specialist. So make sure you guys download that, print it out, and have it as you take the course with you side by side. She asked a great question. For the final exam, it's all in the portal. You have to score a 90% or above to get the certificate and become a specialist. Once you, get, once you pass, you'll get your certificate in the mail as well as your lab coat, and you become a part of our WIG Medical Network. So if you guys, do you guys have any other questions for me? It was such a pleasure coming and speaking to you guys today. Thank you so much for your questions and being attentive. I really hope you guys go on and take this journey to become a cranial prosthesis specialist. If you have any questions, you can reach me at service at wigmedical.com. Again, my name is India. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.